All right. The uh, January 26th meeting of Improvements in Service Committee will come to order, and we'll note that all members are present. Alder Gerlach, Alder Scannell, the one and only, and Alder Burnett, the one and only. Oh, the one and only Gerlach. Yes. <laughs> You're all the one and only. And myself, Alder Weary. And, the one and only. Uh, <laughs> one and only. There you go. That's true. And can I have an approval of the agenda? Any so moved. Any changes? I would like to ask for a change, please. Okay. I yes. would, since I have to leave early, um, I want to hear about all of this, but I would like to move up number three to the top because I really need help with that. And I'd like to hear what's said and let me ask questions. We can certainly do that. Is there anybody here for number one that you know of, Steve? Yes. Is that... Yes. Ryan, okay. Ryan Scree is here. Okay. Is that a, a long issue? Anyway, no, his, think... his actually, I think, should be uh, procedural in nature. It, sh it should go very, very quickly. Okay. Would that be all right, Old Gearlock? We do one, okay. then three? Please. Okay. Is that all right with Motion. the committee? Motion to amend the agenda. Second. Right. Motion by Alder Scano, number one. Second by Alder Gearlock. Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Approval of the minutes. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Alder Scano, second by Alder Burnett to approve the minutes. Any changes? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, regular business. Uh, everything we do today goes to council as a recommendation next Tuesday, 6 o'clock. So, number one, consideration of possible <laughs> action on a request by RGL Logistics for overnight on street parking of semi trailers on Donald Street through the end of June 2022, while accommodations are made for additional off street parking. Director. So Donald Street is on the far northwest side of the city. It's a block north of Velp Avenue, we, uh, east of Military. <coughs> so it terminates at Thrush on the, on the east end. Uh, if you've been on the council long enough, uh, which only Alder Weary has been, uh, years ago, probably 2007, 2008, we put up some very large stones on that end of Donald Street to stop truck traffic from coming out on the Thrush, which has a part, part residential component to it. So RGL Logistics is located on the north side of Donald Street, uh, immediately north of the old Accurate Auto at Military and Velp, if you remember uh, that, that junkyard up there. Uh, so the Warehouse and Distribution Center is on the north side of Donald Street. We had a request come through from RGL Logistics a couple of years ago, similar in nature to this, allowing uh, those logistics uh, companies or the the transport companies, the actual trucking companies, because it's not RGL drivers necessarily who are coming in there and dropping off trailers, okay, um, to park on the north side of Donald Street because they didn't have enough parking on site. And at that time, they were working with the property owner immediately to the east of their warehouse to pave some area up there and get some additional parking. So we granted them a six month opportunity to park on street. Uh, provided that they did snow maintenance around the park trailers. We're only going to plow the through lane. We're not going to plow, plow the parking lane. They're going to have to take care of that if they're in, uh, their, their vehicles are in the way. Uh, obviously, if we have, as the weather gets nicer and we need to start street sweeping, we'll work with them on getting in there to street sweep and that kind of thing as well. Uh, and that worked out very well. They did get some additional parking. With Supply, supply chain logistics being what they are now, there is a lot more trucking uh, and warehousing need coming through the Green Bay area to the point where even with that additional off-street parking that RGL has put in, they have a need for some on-street parking. Given that this is a very isolated area, you really can't get there from here, and the only people who are really being impacted by it are RGL, we're working collaboratively with them to come up with some additional solutions to help get them off the street. Uh, this is the same request they asked us for three years ago. It worked fine then. We anticipate it's gonna work fine now. S uh, staff recommends that we enter into this agreement with them for a six month uh, uh, allowance to allow them to park uh, uh, on the street under the same conditions that we had with them previously. All right, thank you, Director. Uh, any questions from the committee? Motion to approve. Second. Uh, motion by Elder Scannell, second by Elder Gerlach to approve. Elder Burnett? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say it makes sense. It's a, you know, support the business community with a very, you know, ac acceptable concession. I think it's good good for us to do these sorts of things. So I approve. Yeah. 
All right, old scanner. It's in my district, and I'm very familiar with the whole setup there with the stones and everything. And uh, yeah, it's a good idea. Very good. All right, uh, those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. All right, that'll have a 4 0 recommendation to council, uh, Mr. Scray. So it's up to you if you want to go to council or not. I don't envision this uh, being any kind of problem, but we'll get no, final I, approval I, next week. <laughs> I, I appreciate everything. I mean, it's everything. It, getting truck drivers right now is one of the toughest things, and our warehouses are full. So that warehouse is over 100% full, uh, committed space. So what happens is we have all these trailers. Motion, open the floor. No, oh, perfect, yep. Yeah. Motion by Alder Scannell, second by Alder. Do we really need to? We've <laughs> well, I think, no, uh, you, got, you approve we... it. Thank you, though. I appreciate everything. I think we're we're just trying to fit in some things before all the gear lock leaves. Okay. If you want time to speak, I'll gladly we can. No, no, no worries. We're glad to help you out though with this. It seems like an easy one. So okay, thank you again. I appreciate it. Thank you. And thanks, Steve, for everything you've done. All right, so that motion uh, carried and passed, and so we are on to number three: consideration with possible action and request to review account balances, revenues, and expenditures for the wheel tax fund since the inception. Uh, thank you, Steve. Yeah, for all of these, you put together yeah, some nice reports and information. And I don't know if I want to start with you or just uh, older people want to fire away questions. Or Steve, well, if you want um, something you want to lead out with. I, I, I think everything is pretty self-explanatory. So I, 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 I <laughs> no. Okay. Well, then I'd, I'd open it up for questions. Could I, could I start by asking Alder Weary um, why you put this on the agenda? Because I want to know what the purpose of this is before I even start asking. Oh, questions. well, um, and then I don't know, you know, if Steve was really going to plan on putting this on anyway. You know, at some point, just as a report, I, I like to have it on here just to show the public this is what we're collecting. This is what we're using it for. Just be very open and, and transparent on the wheel tax because a lot of people are following up and saying, what are we doing with it? And this clearly spells out what we're using it for. Okay, then I this here's a question. I can ask you a specific question. I don't understand why at the end of the year there's so much cash left in it. Is it because we don't have enough staff to do any more work? We just can't spend it all because we're out of time and resources? No. Um, end of the first year there was cash left over because we didn't want to get very overly aggressive until we knew how much money we were actually taking in. We were guessing. So okay. at the end of 2019, there wound up being 586, almost $587,000 left over. Uh, into year two, uh, we did a little bit better, only left 409,000 left over. Um, into year three, combination of two things. We wound up taking in more than we were anticipating. So our annual estimation is only about 1.7. We took in almost $2 million. Okay. And some of the projects that we bid out that the money was supposed to be assigned to came in better than expected. So we wound up with $547,000. That will also, that'll go directly into projects for 2022. Again, one of the things Alder Weary was alluding to, when we put the, the wheel tax together, there is a complete separate fund. This money is not mixed in with any other money. So it, it's easier for us to track, and that was done by design. When we came and asked for the wheel tax to come in, we stated it was going to be transparent. So it makes it a lot easier for the finance department and my financial staff to query against that 217 account uh, to determine exactly where it's going. We didn't have this necessary, this report, this format necessarily created. Um, I could show you what the financial report that came out of Tyler Munis looked like, and it was bad, and it didn't come to this level of detail, okay? Um, so I've created this report, and it's in a spreadsheet, so that's all we got to do is add a tab for every year, and this will be the report format we're going to use going forward. As Alder Weary indicated, that's one of the requirements is we have to come back, uh, department has to come back to INS every year and explain this was the revenues and expenditures for the prior year and here's the plan for the future year. Can I ask more questions? Sure, yeah, go ahead. Thank you. So in um, 2021, 
under expenses, I see Jackson Street North and Jackson Street South, and I see a figure for them. Is that that big project you did where you tore Jackson Street up and and made a new one? Because that's one I did. I had you know personal <laughs> experience with. I and ended up across it. Yes. So okay. And then, um, do you always try to leave a little bit in because you you don't know what Wisconsin is going to collect? We're pretty confident it's going to be at least one point seven. Okay. Based on the number of vehicles that are registered within the corporate city limits. Okay. Now I have just one last question because I get so tired of hearing about this and people saying. They use that wheel tax. They put it here and they put it there and they don't do it. What ex exact tax money used for? What exactly is it used for? Yes. I mean, how would you describe it? This is for what? Would you call it resurfacing, repaving? What's the, what's the terminology? Okay. Let's take a look at the 2021 expenses specifically. Mm -hmm. Blacktop materials. That's pothole patching. That's purchase oh. of the blacktop to patch potholes. We also Good. do joint and crack sealing. I've seen that. Okay, seen that's the joint that. sealing operations. Those okay. two that used to be under the levy and that was moved off levy into the wheel tax account a couple of years ago. Okay. Gray Street, Jackson North, Jackson South, Maple Street, and the resurfacing, the first five are reconstruct projects the last one is our asphalt resurfacing program. What we used to levy in assessments is now being covered. We still assess, it's just the assessments are being paid by the wheel tax fund instead of by the property owner. Okay. Okay. Now this year it says assessments and allocation. The reason that it looks that way, we came last year and we had a dollar value that was specifically identified towards the assessments and then we identified in the memo that the program because the program has grown we need additional money to fund that program and the wheel tax money is going toward it pays part of that rather than take that money the wheel tax contribution and putting it all on one street we take the assessments so the percentage of the assessments on Gray Street as compared to assessments on the whole, we prorated that wheel tax money that was being used for program expansion, and we just put some of it on Gray and some of it on Jackson North and some on Jackson South. Okay, so we did exactly what we said we were going to do. We are going to pay for a bigger program with it, but rather than putting it all on Jackson Street, uh, and showing that Jackson Street North was paid for with wheel tax money, but Jackson Street South was paid for with bonded money. Everybody okay. got some bonded money and everybody got some wheel tax money. Okay. Gotcha. So that's all, that's all we did was we prorated that, that, that wheel tax allocation out amongst the other programs that we were doing it. Okay. And we do, if, if you're interested, we've got it. I've got it right here. Uh, we've got a, a spreadsheet that shows the allocation counts. <laughs> I'm, I'm perfectly happy now. Thank well, I, I, if the other alders on the committee think this is fine, then I'm fine. I just needed a little basic information. And I, I can see Alder Weary grinning. Uh, again, this goes back. We made a pledge that this was going to be transparent. So we've got everything here. It's, it's just a matter of what you folks want to see. I appreciate it, uh, Steve. Uh, Alder Dorf? Um, Alder here, like I just wanted to point out too that the wheel tax isn't extra additional money coming in. It's money that was is now set aside to make up for assessments. In the past, the assessments oh, yeah. paid. Yeah. So it's not right. like we have this huge pot that we didn't used to have. We right. had it, but it was just paid for in a different way through assessments. Exactly. So that is kind of a flat program in that sure. sense. Well, and that, that is, I think, probably 90% true, right, uh, Director? There is some extra, so we could do more roads with it. I mean, we, like there was a big debate whether or not we put the blacktop materials and joint sealing into this program instead of in the budget and then use that money to do more streets. That, that was a debate back, you know, a couple of years ago, whenever that was. <laughs> yeah, so it ended up... <laughs> part, part yeah. of the wheel tax covers what used to be assessed, but every year it changes year to year based on what our assessment rates and how many streets we're doing. 
give or take, 700, between 700 dollars and $800,000 is what we used to assess that's being covered by the wheel tax. We're generating about 1.7, 1.8 a year, so give or take a million, million one, is new money if you want to think of it that way. But it's money that's going directly into transportation to support the program being larger than it was in 2018. So may I ask if um, if a road gets blacktop materials, fixing potholes, or gets joint ceiling materials, rather than being completely re resurfaced re or reconstructed, constructed or resurfaced, would that would that mean it had a higher PASER rating? Not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> we could have streets that have a, a low PASER rating that are due up for resurfacing or reconstruction, but they also develop potholes that we need to patch before we can get out there and resurface them. So yeah, I, I, I would say there, there's, there's no correlation between a PASER rating and, and the maintenance activities. <laughs> Any other questions from, from committee? All right, um, entertain a motion. Motion to receive and place on file. I'll second. Motion by Elder Scan, I'll second by Elder Gerlach to receive and place some file under discussion. Thanks, Steve. Uh, I like the, the transparency and that's what we were looking for. And hopefully we can take some of that extra half million that's sitting in there and, and add another road or two next year. <laughs> well, actually the, the intent is to take that half million that's left over from, uh, from 2021 and that goes directly into the 2022 CIP. We're putting that right back into roads this year. Perfect, all right. Um, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. That is received and placed on file. Number two, consideration of possible request to review street pavement readings completed in 2021 <laughs> for city streets. Thanks, Steve. That's quite the, the document that's attached. <laughs> Anybody have any, any questions about the street pavings report? Again, it was more transparency so the public could see here what, here's what's being based off of when we're redoing streets and you know, they can easily just cross reference it and it's nice having it all together and even though some of us might think our streets hickory Hill <coughs> is a worse uh is a worser is a, is a worse street uh you know I, i'll trust the baser ratings <laughs> elder gearlock how often are these ratings updated every two years in odd numbered years okay All right. Any any questions? Otherwise, I'll entertain. I'll do I'll do scan all. Just just so I noticed that one in one of the uh, it, it's unknown in unknown street. <laughs> did, did everybody else catch that? <laughs> I, I thought that was uh, interesting. Uh, that doesn't really matter. Just uh, Steve's perplexed. Yeah. I didn't know we had an unknown street. That'd be a great name for a street. He said it would be. I live on unknown street. That actually would be a really good name. Yeah, uh, yeah. But anyway, it's it's nothing. <laughs> Still looking. <laughs> it's in it's uh, uh what number is it? Like a eighth eighth one or something down or something like that. Well, I think I don't think it's an unknown street. I think the street is Fifth Street. But the question, I, if I understand this, they're saying from this street to that from this cross street to that cross street is the part we're talking about and this person said i don't know where i'm starting i'm unknown i'm All ending right. up at oakland avenue south but i don't know where it starts okay that's how i read it i don't know if that's better or worse <laughs> <laughs> either well, way it well, doesn't really heard from the expert <laughs> yeah it's just cute i think it's funny okay but it does, it's really immaterial it's all right, well, those in favor of receiving place in a file? Was there a second? Was nope. there a motion? <laughs> oh, I made the motion. I was going to make the motion. Motion to receive place in a file. All right. Motion by Alder Scano, second by Alder Gerlach to receive place on file. Thanks again, Steve, for the, the good report. You're welcome. Public appreciates it. I appreciate it. Uh, those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Number four, consideration with possible action and request to include resurfacing of Hickory Hill and Redwood Drive. We had discussed this a little bit um, at the last meeting and looking back, we probably did get, I did get enough explanation. It sounds like red included in the next year or two. 
Uh, Hickory Hill. Hickory Hill. Hickory Hill is currently rated a four, so it wouldn't be uh, bad enough to be in the program yet. Uh, and Redwood Drive is currently in the program already for 2024. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, that's. I think that's enough discussion on that. Unless uh, Alder Burnett. Yeah, um, Director Grenier, we we discussed this briefly last meeting. You were not here, yep. Mr. Burnett. Not related. Was he, was there, and he kind of explained quite well. But one thought that I had, and one concern that I had, and this is related to Hickory Hill and Redwood. So, Mr. Chairman, give me a little leeway yep. as I try to lay out my point. But prior to uh, me moving into my district and my neighborhood, there there was uh, my, the road I happened to live on. Trillium that the voters, uh, the, the residents on the street, uh, the voter of uh, the residents on the street, when we did the postcard system, they opted not to have the road reconstructed. Uh, and then San Lorenz, similar situation uh, where they opted. And again, I wasn't the representative. I didn't live out here at the time. So I don't want to, I want to be very careful. It has nothing to do with my road and that I would personally benefit. I guess the question this relates to Mr. Weary's point is that how do you then determine where that street fits? Because Trillium, I drive it daily, there's potholes, it's in rough shape. Not necessarily in front of my house because I'm a four, the rest of the road's a three. San Lorenz, rough shape. Like how do you determine where they fit in the, um, the pecking order of roads to be reconstructed or resurfaced? Randy wants to answer that one? Or is he waving goodbye? No, no, no. I, I think I got the answer to this, and I think I'm partly to blame. <laughs> if, I, if I can give it a shot, uh, it, it, when uh, the wheel tax first came in and uh, they were going through, I talked to uh, Director Dernier about now everybody that had in the past said they didn't want you know the same process, we should start flat out and we look at everybody. So there were roads that did the same thing, but they were much older and of course much more worn down. So if you're starting flat out, those get raised up. And that's how you got jumped because they were older in their denial of be for the same re reason. Um, but uh, uh, so they were- Is that, Director Grinier, is that accurate or is there more to it or? Uh, if, if I understand what Rand, uh, Alder Scandal is saying, there was a policy that if the residents opted not to have the street done, they kind of went to the end of the list. When we, dis when we no longer were collecting uh, assessments from the residents, when we went to the, the vehicle registration fee, that old policy went out the window. We're no longer utilizing it, but what Alder Scandal is saying is, is correct there were streets from years ago that had similarly gone to the end of the list and had not come up to the, their second kick at the cat had not come up yet. So if we're setting everything back to square one, those older streets now took precedence over somebody who deferred more recently. We're simply looking at a combination of pavement rating, uh, sewer condition, the need to improve the water, and where we're getting the best bang for the buck. So we're trying to be as objective as possible. What happened in the past is in the past. None of that matters anymore. Yeah, and, and thank you for that explanation because I think that's what Chairman Weary was kind of getting at. Like it was so bad, Hickory Hill and was so, or Redwood was so bad a few years ago, but now it's not bad enough to, and uh, uh, Alder Dorf kind of gave fresh perspective as well, and I hear that echoed in your comments. My, my only comment to that would be, and again, public perception is one thing, and they, they don't always attend the meeting, so we have to share these thoughts to constituents mm -hmm. uh, as they come to us. But one thing that I'll say in regards to like South Trillium and San Lorenz, there are a lot of residents who did not live on that road when that postcard survey was voted down. Mm -hmm. uh, my street, for example, there have been five to 10 new families. So well, there's always that perception. You're aware of that, Director Grenier, but I think it was important to have this discussion. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, it's good that Alder Weary brought it to, it's in regards to his street, but it's a philosophical thing that relates to many streets, specifically my district. You know, the thing that kind of 
led to the wheel tax finally passing was Hillcrest. I'm grateful that that was actually done a year later rather than a few years from now. So thank you. Hopefully within a few years, all of these old streets that had voted down improvements will all be done and then it won't be an issue anymore. I don't know how soon that'll be, you know, if Redwood's kind of one of the last ones or do we have a lot of those left, Director Grenier? To be honest with down. you, to be honest with you, I, I don't know. Uh, I could definitely talk to staff to see if they're tracking it, but because it's not a consideration in the program any longer, we're not even paying attention to yeah. it. And then that, that's fine. I just, uh, that idea, that issue, that perception will be gone hopefully in a couple of years. So <clears throat> any other questions on this one that we can just receive and place on file, I'd be fine. Motion to receive and place on file. Second. Motion by Elder Scan, I'll second. File the Burnett to file discussion. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That carries. Consideration of possible action on request to review the list of streets for resurfacing and reconstruction 2022 capital improvement program. Any questions on any of these? Uh, and this, this one, I'm going to have to apologize to you. Uh, Jim and I were having a conversation today. Uh, there was a miscommunication between the two of us. I did not realize that what you wanted was to have that uh, that list of streets amended to also include the pavement rating. So that was oh. not supplied to you in the packet. Now you do have the pavement rating for every street in the city, but I actually have um, <laughs> the modified sheets and I would be more than happy to include the amended sheets that also have the pavement rating in the in the report from this meeting. You I just, think that'd be great. You just didn't have them director. for the meeting. No, that'd be great. And then if there's one that has a higher rating, we you know, can just explain why. So, or we could ask a director, <laughs> Alder Burnett. Yeah, I, thank you. Uh, director Grenier, I didn't catch this at the meeting a few weeks ago, but you know, obviously District 12, two straight years with no resurfacing, re, uh, reconstruction but what i didn't realize and mr burnett did mention this maybe i didn't kind of pick up on it but we are using some of the wheel tax revenue to fund the um redesign of uh the design work architect i don't know what the right word is but for country club is that correct so the it, that it is and in the first year of the wheel tax we did both uh hillcrest and haven place so again we're not we're cognizant we don't want to concentrate all the money in one district okay we want to make sure everybody gets some uh but we do tend to look and if you look at a map and we'll get to that shortly here um when you look at them uh, at the maps of streets that are being done you will see that there is some clustering going on and i don't you, you just had uh, indicated you weren't on the on the council when the discussion on Sorrento and San, uh, and San Lorenz came up, but that's why Sorrento and San Lorenz were together is because you have to drive over one to get to the other. We tend to cluster a couple of streets together if they're going to be adversely impacted and they're very close in rating. So generally speaking, resurfacing program are, are three rated streets. However, what you're going to see in the document I'm going to provide to you, St. Anne Drive, uh, which runs the border between districts one and five. There are some segments within, okay, Saint, we're doing St. Anne from Josephine Circle to Mount Mary. There are some of the segments in there that are rated three and some that are rated four. But in order to get in, you have to come in at Josephine and you have to come out at Mount Mary or vice versa. If we only do the three rated streets, we're gonna be driving over a brand new pavement to fix the four rated street when it drops down to a three. So if there's a border segment or if you have threes on either side and a four in between, those are the exceptions to the rule where we'll pick a four up and include it with a group of threes around it that are being done. So with that in mind, when you get this data I'm gonna to give to you, this revised table, you're going to see by and large, the streets in the resurfacing program are threes, but sometimes it will say three comma four, there's a, there's a reason for that. It's either in between a couple of threes or it's along the haul route and not doing it would cause more damage to the new to the threes that were resurfacing when we got to do that four. One thing, just real quick to correct you, we did 
Haven and Hillcrest a year apart. Okay. Uh, you, you, you recommended that we do it together, and I was kind of a pain in the neck, and I got the <laughs> through. Haven as a resurfacing. We got them done program. early in the program. Let's put it that yeah, way. Yeah, all right. So, anyways, I'm grateful. And that was a bit, uh, Hillcrest was a long stretch of road, so I yeah. understand. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Elder Burnett. And thanks again, uh, Director, for uh, amending that. I think it just helps with the transparency to show. So, you mm -hmm. know, usually nothing's cutting ahead of anything else. These are all poorly rated. And if it's not, I'm sure we'll have a discussion as to why. Um, on the reconstruction, I was wondering why Ashland and Harvey were crossed out. There's Ashland Howard Street to Railroad Act. And then Harvey Street, North Jackson to Northwestern. There's a line through it. Okay, Ashland uh, got pulled back from the program due to the uncertainty of uh, what's going on with the Seymour Park stormwater feature. We didn't want to go in there and do the road and have the part of redoing uh, part of a reconstruct is the reconstruction of the storm sewer and sanitary sewer, and you don't want to go in there and redo the storm sewer and put the connections in the wrong place, extend stuff out where it's not going to work. So we need to get. Uh, Seymour Park settled first. And then Harvey was, the majority of that area was done as a uh, major path, so it's in decent shape. Now. Okay, and Harvey we had in the program uh, from a couple of years ago. You know, again, we put together a five year program. Harvey was due up in reconstruct, but we went out on Harvey and did a lot of stormwater upgrades. So as a result of the patch we put above the stormwater, uh, the storm sewer trench, we've actually increased the pavement rating on that and kind of kicked it out of its okay. reconstruct. It will be reconstructed at some point, but at this point it doesn't need it because we actually did too good of a job patching the street when we fixed the storm sewer. Excellent, thanks. Uh, would the reason, and see if I'm right here, would the reason South Van Buren Street's in red is because you were able to add that because you deleted the other two? That's exactly the case. I'm, oh, I'm looking right. over here at, uh, at the assistant director. Okay, that's right. I thought there was an offset there. Perfect. All right. <clears throat> Any other questions from the committee? No. What is your what your wishes? Motion to receive and place on file. Motion by Elder Scamp to receive and place on file. <clears throat> Second by Elder Burnett. Discussion. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. That is received and placed on file. Number six, consideration of possible action on the review and approval of the 2022 special assessment factors and rates. It all went down, right? Um, <laughs> no, nothing ever goes down. <laughs> so sanitary sewer for the sewer main stayed the same. Storm sewer for sewer main stayed the same. Water mains and laterals stayed the same. All the pavement assessments, well, I shouldn't say that. Uh, a type A new street uh, stayed the same. The type B street went up, Resident, uh, residential zones went up from 90 to 93 and all other zones went up, uh, asphalt went up from 135 to 139.50 per foot, and 207 stayed the same. Now a type B street is an existing street with no curb and gutter that gets urbanized. Those are very rare. I think we do have one this year uh, with Superior Road. Yeah. So, or not, I'm sorry, finger. not Superior, finger. finger. There's a segment of finger in District 2 uh, Finger runs one block north of East Mason Street, and the segment we're doing is east of I-43. So immediately east of I-43, um, Superior runs north-south paralleling I-43. So from Superior over to Ontario, um, by yeah, by Uncle... The north side of Uncle Mike's uh, Kringles, if you know where that is on the, on the east, side in the industrial, uh, east side industrial park. So the north side of Uncle Mike's, that, that's the segment we're talking about. That's rural. There's uh, shoulders and no curb and gutter. 
uh, with ditches. And we're actually going to put curb and gutter in. We're going to leave the ditches in and have flumes off the back, much like East Mason Street itself does. But that would be an urbanization project. Um, so commercial, like Uncle Mike's, uh, they would be assessed, uh, and then we would charge the assessments. The difference between the type C street, the existing street, and a type B street is on a type B, there's no existing curb and gutter, so there has to be an additional assessment to help pay for the, the new curb and gutter that goes in. Type C streets, uh, we're recommending going um, local streets from 45 up to 4650 uh, on bus routes, that'll go up from $40.50 to 4185 All other zone classifications, asphalt goes up from 97.50 to 100.80. And concrete goes from 149.50 to uh, stays at 149.50. Um, residential zones on the STP and NHS routes, uh, surface transportation program, national highway system, uh, go from 30 to 31. Uh, residential on heavy bus routes, there's a 10% discount there, so the 27 uh, goes up to 27.90. All of the zone classifications, much like uh, the Subcategory A for local streets, $97.50 becomes $100.80, $149.50 stays the same. Um, resurfacing, we're holding the rates steady. And then the interest rate on unpaid special assessments is dictated by what we expect to see for bond rates this year. Uh, so that's done in consultation with the finance department. And what we have charged is our bond rate plus 2%, the 2% is added on there to help cover the administrative costs with billing out to people over a five year period uh, for anything that's unpaid. Uh, so it helps defer some of the admin costs. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, finance department talking to bond council, uh, they feel that our bond rate is going to be in the neighborhood of 1.75 this year. So that would set the interest rate for unpaid specials at 3.75. Thank you, Director. Questions from the committee? What are your wishes? <clears throat> well, would that be a motion to approve? Yes. Second. Yeah. Motion by Alder Scannell to approve the 2022 special assessment factors and rates, second by Alder Burnett. Any discussion on that? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Number seven is a report of actions taken by Department of Public Works. These were licenses that were granted. Yes. Sidewalk builder A through J. Not sure if I need to read them all or not, but do you have any, any objections to any of those? Otherwise, I'll take a motion to receive and place on file for those. Motion to receive and place on file. Motion by Elder Scannell, second by Elder Burnett to receive and place on file the sidewalk builder licenses. Those in favor? Aye. All right. Opposed, motion carried. Tree and brush trimmers, there's an E through E there, and then uh, we'll throw in the underground sprinkler system. <laughs> motion to receive and place on file. All right. Motion to receive and place on file. Elder Scannell. Second. Second by Elder Burnett. Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, that motion carries. B, you conditionally approve the application contingent upon a positive review of references. Tree and bush trimmer, tree be gone, LLC. Any news on that one, Steve? Uh, no, we're still waiting for the okay. for the reference check to come back, and if the reference check comes back positive, we'll issue the license. Fair enough. It'll be gone. Received in place on file. Bracket. Motion by Elder Scannell, second by Elder Burnett to receive in place on file. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carried. Informational director's report. Uh, just a, a, a relatively brief uh, report. I just wanted to give uh, some update on the finance committee meeting last night. Uh, one of the things that was discussed, it was, it was not an action item, it was an information item only. Um, <coughs> so there was some direction given to staff, but it wasn't necessarily an approval or disapproval or anything that council will take action on. One of the items that was discussed last night was the annual CIP and bond request. The <laughs> levy supported bond request last night was $19 million. We're only retiring $8 million worth of levy supported debt. So obviously that's a big gap. 
uh, total bond request, including all sources, was over 30. I, I know we're asking for about eight million, a little over eight million dollars worth of storm sewer bonding as well. Um, but again, looking strictly at the levy supported borrowing because that translates back, you know, the, those bonds are paid off by the taxpayer through property taxes. Um, there was significant discussion last night relative to what an appetite might be for the council, how big of a bond issue they want to have, what impacts on the levy that would have in the you know in subsequent budgets and things of that nature. Um, so I would expect um, at a minimum, I would strongly suggest that you take a look, uh, that everybody take a look at the packet from finance last night. And if you've got questions uh, to please reach out and have conversations because I do expect this item to be discussed at great length at council on Tuesday night. I do expect it to wind up going back in front of the finance committee, probably at their next meeting. Um, and I would expect some robust conversation at the finance committee, um, you know, two weeks from yesterday. So I just want to do my due diligence uh, because I've got about $11.4 million for the capital program. I got about $1.3 million in equipment that we, uh, that used to be uh, part of our operating budget that we talked about in December that's being bonded for, plus there's about $1.3 million worth of repairs to uh, my West Side garage facility that need to be done, including a roof. Uh, so I got about $14 million out of it, and about 11.3, give or take, um, is, is our capital program. Um, I want to make sure that as many of the alders as I can get in touch with, and I, I've got three of you here, so I'm, I'm talking to the three <laughs> of you tonight, uh, just so everybody's aware of what's going on, what's at stake, if, uh, if you normally don't attend uh, a finance committee meeting, um, a week from Tuesday would probably be one that you'll want to go to. Thanks, Steve. Alder Burnett? Yes, thank you, Chairman. I, uh, Director Grenier, I watched, I didn't participate in the meeting, but I watched it uh, since it happened. And I was, uh, it was a stunning meeting for a lot of reasons, but one question that was not answered is that, and it wasn't asked, <clears throat> I mean, how did it get to this level that this would be presented to the city finance committee? Did did you uh, discuss this as a senior level staff, like all together, like, you know, okay, the fire department has this, the public works has this, and was that reviewed by administration before it gets to the city council? Did the uh, mayor reduce it or did he say, yes, this sounds like a lot or, you know, is there any parsing and I don't want you speaking for the mayor but it, I really need to know was there any parsing down of the list before it even got to the council and I can't speak for how other departments did it our CIP okay that well let, let me speak in in three categories for DPW um, our equipment purchase or equipment replacement that was something that had been discussed months ago Again, that used to be part of our budget, our operating budget, and that got pulled out four years ago, five years ago, whatever it was, and we're bonding for it now. Okay, I don't disagree with why it had to happen. I would love for it to be part of my operating budget in the future, and maybe if you know money starts falling out of the sky, that'll happen. Uh, but that's my equipment. Okay, so that to me, that's a little bit separate from some of the other stuff. Um, then my my bond request, both the equipment or the the building repairs at the at the garage and the rest of my capital program, that's always been part of my capital program. Okay, so when I brought the CIP here, um, on the last page of the CIP, let me see if I can. Uh, I'm going to see if I can pull one up real quick here. <laughs> I got to remember how to share a screen in 
zoom. Okay, so that's this is the document you're used to seeing. So we have all the various streets and programs and things that we're doing, but then when we get to the back page, the last page, you know, we have our total pavements, our sewers, sanitary sewers, parking ramp repairs. We've always had DPW garage repairs and equipment down here. So that hasn't changed. It's just we're tracking it separately at 1.26 versus the 11.395 of, uh, of pavement when it goes into the finance package, okay, or finance committee packet. So I prepared my CIP the same way I would have prepared my CIP any other year. Following the direction that the, count, uh, the council's given me, we're looking to hit that 30 to 33,000, that 32,000 or so sweet spot linear feet of road in a combination of resurfacing and reconstructs. Now this year we happen to be a little heavier on the reconstructs because there are, street that, there are streets that need that reconstruction that just can't wait. So we're bumping that up a little bit. Um, so I put together a program, at least my program, reflects the direction that the Common Council's given. Um, I didn't go above board, I didn't go overboard with anything. I put together a program meeting the requirements or meeting the, the, the guidelines uh, that the Council's provided me. That's, that's the dollar value that comes along with that program. And why is that dollar value higher now than what it may have been in prior years? Uh, two primary reasons. Uh, first one, materials have gone out of sight. They just, yeah. they have, okay? We got yeah. some phenomenal pricing last year and came in just a little bit under what we had asked for. So we had a little bit of carryover money uh, that's coming into this year that's getting applied we don't have to bond so much this year. We're going to use the money we have. Um, last year, when we had the same conversation at the finance committee, the finance director sat down with every director, and we went through line item by line item. I was looking at, um, we had purchase orders in the, the pavement account on projects from three years ago that we had closed the project out and there was an open PO for $3,000. So that money was kind of set aside. You couldn't use it. It was in the fund, but it was, it was spoken for. And we closed all of those POs. We scrubbed accounts literally down to the $3,000 level. And we scraped together several hundred thousand by doing that, just by cleaning out our, uh, doing a little bit of housekeeping uh, on those accounts. But that in essence was one time money. You can't go and keep scrubbing uh, when you've cleaned that account already, okay? So we were able to generate some underutilized funding in pri uh, from prior years, but that's gone. So having no reserves and increasing costs is, is why our payment, or at least our big bond request, that's why ours has gone up uh, so significantly. Now, ag again, I can't speak for other departments. I don't know how they put their numbers together, but I, I, I can speak to you about mine. And everybody here, you know, the three uh, three alders here tonight, you've, you've heard me preach the same thing. Um, I don't know how other people put their budgets together either. I don't ask for something here in hopes that we're going to settle down here. I come to you with my best honest guess uh, estimation on what I think I'm going to need for a budget. I do the same thing with my capital program. So I, I gave you an honest CIP from day one, and then it, then it comes, then, then it's up to you as far as you know what, what you folks have an appetite for, for funding. Um, and I'm, I'm fine with that. I'll deliver whatever program you ask me to, you know, to deliver. Uh, but yeah, I, I really can't speak to how other, other folks did it. My, mine was build a program under the constructs that the council is giving you guidance on. Thanks, Director. Alder Bernan? No, that's all. I was just <clears throat> wish I could have attended the meeting because there are some things I would have said there, but it just seemed like Anyways, I'll save my comments for the council. Thank you. All right, thanks. 
Any other questions? Any other any other items that need to be any big storms coming, Steve? Uh, we're not seeing anything in the in the near future. Um, the last ones that came through, we had two of them come through a day or so apart. Um, relatively more nuisance storms than anything, especially with the type of snow that came. It was light, fluffy, uh, you know, not even good for making a snowman. Uh, we were going to go into recovery mode this week, uh, and during recovery mode, in between storms, after we get the primary snowfall plowed off and clean up our own corners and cul-de-sacs and things like that. I want to send my staff home because they haven't shoveled their own driveways yet, a lot of them, uh, so they got things to take care of at home, and they've been out fighting a storm for God knows how long. I want them rested, recuperated, so that they can come back bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, and nobody gets hurt, okay? So once we get staff back on the job and we're back into in-between storm mode, if we've got snowpack accumulated in residential zones, I want those folks back out with graders and loaders and we go into scraping operations, even though we don't have a bare street policy, that what that means is I can't guarantee you residential streets are gonna be bare after we're done plowing. If in between plow events, we have nothing better to do, um, and I can get the, the, the vehicles who can generate down pressure out there and we can do scraping, we will try to get back down to bare pavement because that's in our best interest as well. So normally we would be out this week with loaders and graders trying to scrape and get back down to bare in the residentials. We have not done that because of the wind chills and what that does to pavement temperatures. The scraping operations aren't going to be as effective right now uh, because of the cold temperatures. That stuff, anything that's bonded to the street is, is on there like glue, it's not coming up. So we're gonna roll that back for a little while we have gone out and sanded in all residential routes, so there should be adequate traction even on the snowpack. And as weather conditions allow, we will go back into that uh, into the residential routes and do scraping operations. But we're not going to go out there and break our equipment uh, trying to do something. We want to wait until the weather cooperates. On the plus side, okay, those of you who've been on the committee long enough uh, and have heard me preach about snow and ice management. Um, in rel relatively general terms, Valentine's Day is usually a big day uh, in my snow fighting world, not because of Valentine's Day, but usually around February 14th. That's one of the kick days that I look at when the sun is starting to get higher in the sky and we can start counting on Mother Nature to help us out. Less chemical, more mechanical, if you want to think of it that way. Uh, we made it all the way to the 26th of January already. We're only, you know, roughly two weeks away uh, from the sun getting higher in the sky. I notice it already when I'm leaving work. You know, there are, you know, one or two days a month where uh, it's not completely dark out when I leave here and, uh, uh, you know, it's not all street light. So we're already seeing those effects. The sun's getting, the days are getting a little longer, sun's getting higher. So there is, uh, you know, the proverbial light at the end of the tunnel. So we are looking forward to coming out of the snow season. Excellent. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, uh, can we receive and place on file? Motion to receive and place on file. Motion by Elder Scannell. Second. Second. By Elder Burnett. Aye. Oh, Aye. Motion carried. Next meeting appears to be February 9th. And uh, this leaves us at adjournment. Motion to adjourn it. Second. Motion by Elder Scannell. Second by Elder Burnett to adjourn. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion Aye. carried. Aye. All right. Thanks, Thanks for your time, everyone. Thanks, Dave. Yeah.